Welcome to the Object-Oriented Design Patterns in Real Life series. I'm your host, CY. In this series, we will combine design patterns with real-life analogies to get an intuitive understanding of these design patterns. The star of this episode is the singleton pattern. We will first go over the story of a lovely family and how the singleton pattern solves their problem to gain a basic understanding of the pattern. And then, we will take a look at two examples from the JDK source code. After that, we will take a deep dive into the pattern to discuss its potential issues, pros and cons, and all the dramas around it and its alternatives. The spice level is quite high on this topic, so get your pop points ready. Lastly, we will discuss a lesson related to our engineering career. Yes, the story around this pattern actually has a hidden message about how to become a better engineer. We will touch on the topic of over-engineering and the toolbox mindset. Well, we have lots of goodies ahead of us. Get excited and let's jump right into it. On her way home from work, Mrs. Brown stops by the grocery store to pick up some milk for the family. During checkout, the cashier asks, Would you like to join our rewards program, Mrs. Brown? With the rewards program, each time you shop from the store, you will get points. If you accumulate over 500 points each month, you can get the toy of the month for free. Here's how the code for the reward card looks like. To create a new reward card, one has to pass in the owner's name, a points checker used for checking how many points an item worth, and the creation time. It has two methods, add points and description. Oh, that sounds wonderful. My little daughter Alice has been complaining about getting new toys. Sign me up, Mrs. Brown says. At the family dinner, Mrs. Brown shared the good news with the family. Alice's eyes light up by the news. She has been begging her parents to buy her new toys for a while. Oh, honey, I forgot to tell you, I signed up for that program last week as well, Mr. Brown says as he pulls out a reward card from his wallet. Well, mom and dad, sounds like you two should coordinate and use the same card each month, Justin, the older son says. Yeah, that's a good idea. A few months pass by. One day, Justin comes home from school, realizing his sister seems to be a bit down. What's wrong, Alice? Anything bothering you? Justin asks. Kiki just showed me her new toys in school. I want a new toy too, Alice mumbles. Oh, what happens to the rewards program from the grocery store? With the amount of grocery we get, I think we should have enough points each month, right? Yeah. But we always end up having two rewards cards each month since mom and dad keeps forgetting to use the same car. Oh, Justin was a bit surprised to hear that. When he was doing his homework at night, Justin can't help but think about the problem. He doesn't want to see his sister being sad. So the problem is each month, mom and dad happen to be using multiple rewards cards. If there's a way to make sure they always use the same card each month, then the problem will be solved. So the challenge is in ensuring we only have one card each month and that card should be accessible to anyone in the family. Wait, that face sounds familiar. Justin remembers that's something he just read about from the design pattern textbook. That's the singleton pattern. Justin opens the textbook to review the pattern. The pattern ensures a class has only one instance and provides a global point of access to it. Then Justin starts to write a class using this pattern. He wrote a brown reward card class designed for his family. Similar to the reward card class, the brown reward card also needs the owner's name, a points checker, and the create time. What makes this class special is that the new method, which is the constructor of the class, is declared as a private class method. So no one besides this class can call the new method. To get an instance of the brown reward card class, one needs to use the instance method. By making the constructor private, Justin makes sure there's only one instance of the class. Next day, Justin, Mrs. Brown, and Mr. Brown go to the grocery store together and hand the program to the cashier. Please run this program first, next time any of us wants to open a new car, Justin says. And now, thanks to the program, the Brown's family makes sure there's only one rewards card. Alice is now able to get free toys, problem solved. 
Let's take a quick look into the problem the Browns family runs into. They want to ensure the family only has one car and that car should be accessible to anyone in the family. This problem maps exactly to the definition of the singleton pattern. Only has one car maps to ensuring a class has only one instance accessible to the family maps to providing a global point of access to it. And here we just learn the definition of singleton pattern. Now let's take a quick look at two examples from the JDK source code. Links to both examples are in the description section. The first one is from the one-time class. From the first sentence of common, we know that JDK wants to make sure every Java application only has a single instance of the class runtime within the class. The current runtime variable is declared as private and static, and the first method within the class is a static method for retrieving the current runtime variable. At the same time, the constructor for the class is private, as the comment reads, don't let anyone else instantiate this class. Here's another example, the log manager. The first sentence of the comment also says, there is a single global log manager object. Once again, we want to make sure there's only one instance of the class, and that instance is marked as private, and there's a getter to retrieve this instance. The only small difference in this class is instead of making the constructor private, it is marked as protected for the sake of subclassing. If we compare the examples we have seen so far, we will see a clear pattern of how singleton pattern is implemented. First, they all have a private variable for the instance. Secondly, they have a private or protected constructor to make sure no one can instantiate another instance variable of the class. Lastly, they all has a class method pointing to the instance. In this deep dive section, we will cover two things to watch out for about singleton patterns implementation. Singleton pattern versus global variables, why people don't like singleton pattern, when to use it, and its alternatives. Feel free to skip to the next part for the lesson related to engineering career and come back to this part later in the future when you think you need to use the singleton pattern. The TLDR is that singleton pattern is considered as an anti-pattern because it gets used in the wrong way in most cases. If you have the appetite for some spicy drama in the programming community around this pattern, sit tight and have your popcorns ready. There are two things we need to watch out for when using singleton pattern, subclassing and handling multi-threads. We won't go into details about them here, since after this section, you may want to avoid using singleton pattern altogether. Now, let's take a look at singleton pattern versus global variables. They both provide a global point of access for an object or a variable. Singleton pattern guarantees there's only one instance but global variables don't. And singleton pattern also allows lazy instantiation, but global variables don't. We can tweak the brown reward card class a bit to use lazy instantiation. Instead of instantiating a brown reward card as soon as the class is loaded, we can declare it as nil and only instantiate it at the first time the instance method is called. Besides the two challenges we mentioned, there are a full range of other dangers of abusing singleton pattern. These are the reasons why lots of engineers dislike this pattern. So this is the popcorn time we have been waiting all along. With a quick search on the internet, we can see lots of articles written about why singletons are bad. The first downside of singleton pattern has to do with global point of access to the instance. This makes singleton pattern very similar to global variables, and at this point of time, the dust around global variable is settled. It is something people in the programming community despite with the passion. So why is it so bad? Because it makes programs non-deterministic and hard to reason about. When someone reads this code, it's very reasonable to assume the results of car x.total points and car y.total points are the same since the code used to create and operate on car S and car Y are identical. But since the instance method points to the same variable, the actual total points depends on the order the code is called. If we create and add points to a car S first, the result of total points from car X will be different than creating and adding points to car Y first. What's even scarier is that we don't know how many times add points has been called before we create car S and car Y. This makes it almost impossible to reason about the state of the cards without having to read through the whole code base and find out where and in what order add points is called. This global point of access 
also defeats the purpose of co-design. Co-design in an essence is about setting up the proper encapsulations and boundaries among code to make programs easier to maintain and reason about. Global variables defeat all boundaries because, well, since they are global, everyone can use and modify them, which creates backdoors to existing boundaries. The book Refactoring to Patterns puts it elegantly. The real problem with Singleton is that they give you such a good excuse not to think carefully about the appropriate visibility of an object. Finding the right balance of exposure and protection for an object is critical for maintaining flexibility. The other issue with singleton pattern is that it encourages hidden dependencies. In the reward card class, it explicitly asks for a points checker in the constructor. This makes the dependency clear and explicit, but in the brown reward card class, the same dependency is hidden. When someone uses the brown reward card by calling the instance method, he or she has no idea about the points checker. In our case, the points checker is a points checker via Wi-Fi. Since we are not aware of this dependency, when we try to use the brown reward card, we may not care about making sure the Wi-Fi is available, so the class may break and we have no idea why. So when should we use the singleton pattern? First, take a close look to see if you actually need it. The singleton pattern is used to ensure there's only one instance of the class. In reality, it's really weird for us to run into this requirement. In our case, a data storage to keep track of the car and its points can solve our problem. Using singleton pattern is more acceptable if the instance is only used to perform an action the remaining of the program doesn't depend on like a void method that doesn't return values. Logging is a good example. In the article, use your singletons wisely. Winsberger suggests three tests to see if you do need to use this pattern. The article is linked in the description section. Let's talk about alternatives to singleton pattern. We need to first understand that singleton pattern breaks the single responsibility principle. Single responsibility principle says one class should only have one responsibility. In the case of singleton, the class not only holds the related business logic, but is also responsible for ensuring the class has only one instance. Why should the class itself be responsible for being a singleton? It seems quite logical for the application to take this responsibility, since it is the application that requires this behavior. At this point, the quote-unquote singleton class is really just a normal class. It is also recommended to put all of singleton creation into one factory responsible for creating this kind of long leap objects. By putting them in one place, the dangerous part of the program is more visible. Well, we spend so much time talking about singleton pattern and arrive at the conclusion that in most situations, we should avoid using it. If that's the case, what's the point of learning it in the first place? There are two approaches to learn and adopt best practices, the hammer mindset versus the toolbox mindset. The hammer mindset goes like this. When you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. This mindset not only leads to over-engineering, but it also turns engineers into slaves of quote-unquote best practices. I certainly fell into this trap before. The second way of thinking is the toolbox mindset. Instead of feeling obligated to make use of all the best practices we come across, we should treat each of them as a tool. For each tool, besides learning what it is and how to use it, it's more important to know when and when not to use it. Psychologist Abraham Maslow points out the hammer mindset in his book. I suppose it's tempting, he says. If the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail, notice the keywords here are the only tool. So a good way to mitigate the hammer's mindset is by adding more tools to our engineering toolbox. The last thing I want to mention is don't be afraid. I think some amount of over-engineering is inevitable in one's journey to become a better engineer. Sometimes the best way to know where the line is is by crossing the line and remember how it feels. So when you acquire a new shiny tool, don't try to use it everywhere, but also don't get so timid that you don't use it at all. When your best judgment tells you a potential use case of the new tool, go ahead and try it out. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. You either learn to fail or fail to learn. So go ahead, learn and adopt new tools. Don't be afraid to try it out and get ready to learn from your experience to know where the line is. I think this is essentially the journey of becoming a better engineer. I find this mindset is also applicable to life advice as well. The world is full of different kinds of advice for every aspect of life, ranging from what to eat to how to find your life callings. While lots of these suggestions are coming from genuine places and can be good for us, it's easy to get lost and overwhelmed. 
Thanks for watching this far. I'm still trying out different formats. As I'm making this video, I'm a bit worried that the deep dive part may be too long and maybe the career lesson part isn't relevant. It's hard to know how to improve without feedback. Since you already watched this far, do you mind leaving a quick comment? Simply comment which part you enjoyed the most will be super helpful already. I really appreciate your feedback. Alright, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.